The PDF file format is very popular for sending files to get printed or posting them online for people to download. So it's very important to understand how to get the most out of the PDF file format. I've got a file open here. It is a four page file and I'm going to publish it to PDF. So we'll choose file, publish to PDF, and it asks us for the name of the file. So let's just call it Textures Unleashed Volume 11 Crystals. That sounds good. We want it to be a PDF file and we have the option to choose a preset. These are presets supplied by Corel. Certainly you can save your own and they are somewhat self-descriptive. So if it's a pre-press project, you would choose this one. If it's going for the web, this one, etc. They're all described in the book PDF file so you can read and see what they all mean. But no matter which one you choose, most likely you're going to want to choose settings. So if we choose settings, it brings up a dialog box with many choices. Now, you may not make many changes to these settings, but it's important to know that they are there and that you can make these changes. So on the General tab, it starts out, do you want to save the current document? All open documents, and it will give you a list of all open documents that you can do. Do you want the current page? Do you want to select pages? For the page size, do you want it as defined in Corel Draw, or if you have selected objects set by the selected objects? Since I didn't select anything, it is the page size as defined by Corel Draw. If you want to save your own preset, you would do it here. So the idea is you're going to go through all of the tabs and choose the settings that are most appropriate. Then you'll click on plus, you'll give it a name. We'll just say this is the Unleashed preset. You'll say OK, and in the future, you can choose that preset. Let's move this off to the side. The new preset would show in this list, so you could choose it. The last setting on this particular tab is what version of Acrobat do you want to be compatible with? The newest version supported by Corel Draw is Acrobat 9 format. Keep in mind, as of this movie recording, Acrobat 11 is the current version. And there are also choices at the bottom for some special flavors of PDF, and these are all described in the book if you want to know what each one means. In most cases, I find Acrobat 5 to be the best choice. On the next tab, we'll explore the color settings. So do I want to use the document color settings? So remember, in the color management lesson, we talked all about color management for a document, and that's what it's talking about. We also talked about the color proof settings. So if you're creating a PDF that follows the proof settings, you'll choose that. What colors do you want output? Or should I say, what color models? Native means whatever the objects use in the file, they will be kept in that same color model. They can be converted to RGB, CMYK, or grayscale. In most cases, native is the best choice. If there are spot colors, and we check the box, we have the option to convert them to RGB or CMYK. This particular file has no spot colors, and therefore the option is grayed out. Do you want the color profiles used to be embedded in the file? Yes, it makes the file just a little bit bigger, but the color will be more accurate because the person looking at the PDF will be using the same color models that you used when creating the file. If there are overprints, meaning trapping, in the file, they can be preserved. Or, if you don't check it, they will be thrown out. If there is black, do you want it to automatically overprint? So those are two choices. I'm going to leave them as is because they aren't necessary for what I'm doing. The document. Here you can put your name, any keywords associated with the file. 
Even though optimized for fast web use sounds like it's something you'll want to do if the file goes on the web, it can be problematic. So I suggest no matter what, you do not check that box. If you want hyperlinks to be included, make sure you check this. For example, each of the tiles in this file has a hyperlink associated with it. So in the PDF, clicking on the tile will take you to that location specified by the hyperlink. Do you want bookmarks generated? Do you want thumbnails? Well, in a PDF file, you can have a thumbnail for each page. It sounds good, but a PDF reader can generate them automatically, and doing it here simply makes the file bigger. When the PDF is opened, do you want the page only? Do you want it to be full screen? Do you want the bookmarks panel to be open? Your choice. And for encoding, do you want it to be ASCII 85 or binary? I highly recommend you stick with binary as that's going to give you much better options. On the next tab, we can specify how the objects are output. So our first choice is compression type. No compression doesn't really make any sense. We do want compression it keeps the PDF file smaller. LZW and ZIP are more or less the same thing. So I would suggest in these cases you would choose ZIP. ZIP will give you a larger file than if we choose JPEG. But it does not use lossy compression. So for the absolute highest quality output you want ZIP. But if you're creating a file destined for the web, you might want to make it with JPEG compression. The reason being, the file will be significantly smaller. Yes, there is a loss of quality, but that's the price you pay to get a smaller file. If you choose JPEG, you can specify the quality. If the arrow is all the way to the left, it gives you the highest quality with JPEG compression but it will also give you the largest file. The farther you drag it to the right, the smaller the file gets, but any bitmaps in the file are going to start to look pretty bad if you get all the way over to the right. The other thing you can do with bitmaps is you can downsample them. So let's say you created a project for print and each of the bitmaps was 300 dpi. You want to send a quick proof to someone like the client, well you don't need the extreme high resolution so maybe you downsample to 200 or even 150 dpi. It still looks pretty good on screen but the file would be significantly smaller. For this project I'm going to uncheck it because I do not want that. If you have complex fills think about mesh fills, fountain fills, pattern fills, those kinds of things, they can be rendered as a bitmap. Yes, this does make the file a little bit bigger, but in many cases it makes the f file more reliable for output, so it's a good idea. Do you want to compress text and line art? That's a very good idea. It simply makes the file smaller. Do you want all text converted to curves? Well, the person looking at the file or printing the file doesn't have to worry about font substitution at all, but if they need to make any edits whatsoever, they can't edit the text as text. So you be very careful about this. Also keep in mind, text converted to curves will increase the file size and maybe quite dramatically if there's a lot of text in the file. Do you want fonts embedded? most likely the answer is yes. The base 14 fonts. I would say no because the first option embeds the fonts you have used so you're not really worried about these. If you have used true type fonts do you want them converted to postscript? In the old days that was generally a good idea. Nowadays it's not a problem whatsoever. I suggest you do not check it. Subsetting means only the characters in a font that are used will be saved in the file. Yes, it does make the files smaller, maybe significantly, 
But quite honestly, a font takes up maybe 50K. So it may subset down to 5 or 10K. It's not that much of a savings unless you've used a lot of fonts. And the last choice here, if you have placed EPS files, and I have to stress placed EPS files, if you have imported them as editable, this doesn't matter. But if you have placed them, it will either send the postscript data to the PDF file, which means it can print correctly, but nothing will be visible on screen, or do you want the preview to be visible, but it also means the preview print. So be very careful about that setting. And if in doubt, it's probably the best idea not to place EPS files. Our next choice is the prepress tab. And it's mainly used if you are truly sending a file out to be printed on a press. So if it's something you're creating for the web, most likely you don't want to use this. If you have designed the file with bleeds, you can check the bleed limit and specify the maximum amount of bleed that will be shown. If you have specified halftone screens on fills, you can say to preserve them. I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked. The printer's marks. Do you want crop marks, file information, registration marks, and densitometer scales to be added to the PDF file? Great things if you're printing, not something you need for on the web. We'll learn more about these when we talk about sending a file to a print shop. And the last choice here is maintaining OPI links. If you have used OPI, Open Prepress Interface, I'm sure you're aware of it and you'll want to maintain it. Rarely, if ever, will these be used. So it's probably not something you have to worry about, but it never hurts to check it. Well, I'm going to turn off the bleed limit because I do not want that on this particular file. Our next tab, the Security tab, and there are two potential passwords you can add. The first one means that nobody can open the file without knowing the password. So if there's some somewhat confidential information in the PDF, maybe you want to assign a password just to view it. I'm going to uncheck that. I don't want that. The second one, the permission password, is used only for somebody to edit the PDF file. Now one way to edit would be importing it into CorelDRAW. So anyone who tried to import the PDF of this book into CorelDRAW would have been asked for a password. You're not supposed to edit the file and therefore we have added a permission password. You can choose two different kinds of permissions. Are they allowed to print the file? You can choose no, the person cannot print the file. So if you're sending a proof to a client and you're fearful they may take the artwork to someone else for output, specify it can't be printed and that won't be an issue. You can say it only prints low resolution or it prints high resolution. So for example, this book, we set it to high resolution. If you really want to print it, you can certainly do so and get the highest quality. We just don't recommend printing it. The second choice are the editing permissions. None at all. You can't do anything. You can insert, delete, and rotate pages, or you can do most anything except extract the pages. I'm going to say none. Do you want to enable copying of text, images, and other contents? Well, typically, if you're protecting it, you don't want that to be possible, so you don't want to enable it. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this back off as I'm not going to use it in this particular example. The last tab is the pre-flight tab and it tells us we have an issue. And there's a variety of issues that may be listed here. Some of them are pretty bad and you'll want to fix them before outputting the PDF files. Others aren't really a big deal. So this one says the file contains fonts 
that are smaller than 18 points. And the concern here is it might be hard to read on screen. Well, knowing what text is in this file, I don't have a problem with the small fonts. So I'll simply say, OK. I'll save the file and it's all set. So that's how you can publish a file to PDF in Corel Draw. Some settings are useful for a file to be printed. Other settings are useful for a file you will distribute on the web or via email.